Now you might not necessarily be taking the ACS final, but any kind of final you're taking, these are kind of these are the ideas or the concepts that you need to get down or be familiar with, be comfortable with, be ready for for the final. For the ACS final, it's the American Chemical Society final exam, and it's a multiple choice exam. There is no write on. So if you're com or if you're used to having write on questions on your exams with your professors, then don't expect that. Uh, there won't be any kind of mechanism you have to draw or any kind of uh, reaction conditions you have to make up or pull out of thin air. Uh, so it's going to be multiple choice, which is to your advantage, but it also means you need to study in a different way or practice in a different way. Online, you can find an ACS study guide. <clears throat> and the ACS study guide is just a, a, a little bound book that has a lot of these concepts that I'll talk about that you need to be prepared for and it pr attacks it or it addresses these concepts in a very organized way and so it's a very helpful resource. I used it to study for the ACS final and, and I found it very helpful. The other suggestion is to use some of the chapter tests that you may have at the, in, at the back of every chapter in the solutions manual. Solutions manuals usually have at the end of every chapter a group of problems um, varying difficulty with the answers in the solutions manual. And so those are helpful for you to work through. Here are some of the concepts that you should be familiar with and, and that you should be prepared to answer questions on for the ACS final. Of course, nomenclature, uh, stereoisomerism, and that a, lot of, lot, a lot of that is what you covered in, in, in the first half of organic chemistry. Solvent effects is an important part, and that was also in the first half of organic chemistry. Aromaticity. Uh, spectroscopy is very important. And actually, if you're looking for some practice problems, uh, you can look online, and if you Google search SDBS, there's a website called the SDBS website where you can obtain spectra from many different compounds. And this is a good way to practice for spectroscopy type problems. You can type in the name of a compound or enter the number of carbons, the number of uh, whatever atom, and it'll give you a list of compounds and you can look at the different spectra for each of those compounds. The mass spec, the IR, the HNMR, the CNMR, uh, and that's very helpful. Also be familiar with acids and bases in the context of organic chemistry and, and what we addressed, especially um, the concepts that were addressed in the first half of organic chemistry with things like which compound is more basic, which compound is more acidic. You should be familiar with every type of addition, elimination, or substitution reaction that you looked at or worked through in both semesters of organic chemistry. You should also be familiar with oxidation and reduction reactions, and, there's, um, and that should be something you should be comfortable with. Carbonyl chemistry is very important, especially for the second half of organic chemistry, and that's something you should be able to, to answer questions about. And then any of the other common reactions that you've seen throughout both semesters of organic chemistry, you should go through all the mechanisms you can remember and especially highlight the important ones in each chapter. Grignard reagents are really important. Uh, things like a lot of the basic reactions we talked about in, this, in the first half of organic chemistry. A lot of times they won't test on as specific of material from the second half, but you should, you should be very familiar with most of the things that you've covered. You should also be very familiar with uh, some names of reactions. So you should be able to uh, understand what the Sandmeyer reaction is, or what a Schiff base does, or um, be able to recognize Wolf-Kishner reduction, those type of things. You should be familiar with the common names for the reactions and how they're, they are uh, referred to in the literature in organic chemistry. So those are some suggestions, and I suggest you go back and look through all the, all the videos that we've made, and I hope they've been helpful, and good luck.